Palestine and Israel. It's complicated. Well, at least that's what some people would like you to think. We've long been sold the narrative of a tit-for-tat skirmish of rockets, a real estate dispute, or even a centuries-old religious feud. There's so much more to the story of Palestine we all need to know. So, how did we get here? Let's take it back to the beginning. It starts with the end of a world war, Muslims fighting each other, and a promise made by the West only a century ago. So here's how the story begins. It's 1916, and the First World War is raging on. The Ottoman Empire is 617 years old at this point, and is on the brink of collapse. The British and the French had promised the Arab sovereignty and Arab leadership over the Arabian Peninsula and the Levant if they helped them defeat the Ottomans. And so the Arabs said, okay. And so they helped them defeat the Ottomans. Now I know what you're thinking. What's this got to do with Palestine and the creation of Israel? Just trust me, we'll get there. Okay, so when the British and the French won, the Arabs wanted the land that was promised to them. But little did they know, the British and the French had this little top secret meeting. And in this top secret meeting, it was planned that the captured Ottoman province will be divided into areas of British and French control and influence. The British would receive Palestine, Jordan, and Southern Iraq, while the French would control Southeastern Turkey, Northern Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon. This was called the Sykes Picot Agreement. But then the Arabs found out about this agreement and they were shocked. They had been bamboozled and tricked. They thought that they were fighting a war in order to overthrow their non-Arab Muslim rulers only to end up with, you guessed it, European colonial rulers instead. Anyway, that's a long story for another video. Now that the British occupy Palestine, something unusual is happening back in Europe. You see, the Zionist movement had been growing increasingly influential and lobbied hard to support the mass migration of Jews to Palestine and recognize a Jewish claim to the Palestinian land. And in 1917, Britain out of nowhere publicly declared its intentions of establishing a national home for the Jewish people in Palestine. So the British just gifted Palestine, a country which was made up of 90% Palestinians to European Zionists. They gave it just like you would give a box of chocolates. Historians still debate till this day why the British gave Palestine to Zionists. It's simply baffling. Now, at this point, the Jewish population in Palestine was less than 10%. So when the British started to facilitate the immigration of European Jews to Palestine from 1922 and 1935, the Jewish population rose to 27%. With the British mandate in full swing, mass European Jewish immigration meant that more land would be seized and the native Palestinian population grew increasingly worried. The Palestinians would demonstrate their concerns to their British overlords, but they wouldn't have it. European Jewish settlement was on the rise. The British proposed a partition of Palestine and even advised the forceful removal of the Arab population from their homes. And yes, this was their plan to resolve the issue. So the Palestinians naturally rejected this proposal and revolted against the British. The revolts were crushed violently, killing thousands of Palestinians. But the Palestinians wouldn't give up. They would continue their fight for independence and the British were clearly fed up. So in 1947, the British decided to hand over their responsibility for Palestine to the United Nations. So basically, they just said, here, clean our mess. And so the UN proposed this ridiculous proposal again, where Palestine will be partitioned into a Jewish and Arab state. Remember, Jews in Palestine only constituted one third of the population, most of whom arrived from Europe just a few years earlier. Yet, in this proposal, they were allocated 55% of the land. Feeling like they got a bad deal, again, the Arabs rejected the proposal, and the Zionists accepted. However, here's the catch. The Zionists didn't agree to the proposed borders, and even campaigned for more land. So they agreed to an Israeli state, but didn't agree to the size of it. So they can just choose it for themselves. By 1948, Zionist militia would storm and capture Palestinian populated villages and cities, leaving thousands of Palestinians homeless and landless. The Zionists wanted to seize and cleanse as much land from Palestine before the British would officially withdraw their forces. And on the same day that they left, the Zionists proclaimed the establishment of the new Israeli state. Overnight, millions of Palestinians lost their country. And what's even more bizarre, is that immediately the two superpowers, the United States and the Soviet Union, 
recognize the new state of Israel. And if it couldn't get any worse, May 15th, 1948 was perhaps one of the darkest days in Palestine's history. They called it the Nakba, or the catastrophe. To lose your country, your identity, and your home just like that is something truly horrifying. But that wasn't enough for those Palestinian men, women, and children. They had to be ethnically cleansed from their lands and driven into near total destruction. See, the creation of the State of Israel didn't just mean that 1.9 million Palestinians were forced out of their homes. It didn't just mean that 78% of historic Palestine had been taken from its natives. It didn't just mean that 530 villages and cities were destroyed and ethnically cleansed. And it didn't just mean the killing of 15,000 Palestinians in a series of mass atrocities. It means that it was the start of something even more horrifying for the Palestinian people. It signaled over 70 years of occupation home demolitions, arbitrary arrests, displacements, Israeli expansion, military checkpoints, construction of walls, discrimination, massacres, and bombing of innocent men, women, and children in their own homes. So no, it's not complicated. The Palestinians are a people who have been oppressed and had their lands taken away from them and have been suffering ever since. This is how the events of the past shape the conditions of today. This is why it is important to remember and reflect our history before it repeats itself again. Because Allah knows we don't need it to happen again in another part of the world. May Allah lift the pain and the struggles from our Palestinian brothers and sisters. Amen.